Cinema Gulp for the disaster artist. Take one. Oh, hi, Hollywood. Welcome to Tommy's world. You're doing an intro. All right, cut. Take one. Oh, hi, everybody. Wait, line. I am here to give you my movie. Take two. Who is Cinema Gulp? We're here to talk about my movie. This is Cinema Gulp. Who are you, director man? You fired. I can't work like this. Get the fuck off. Fuck you. Fuck out of here. Yeah, fuck you. Fucking what did you think of the room slash the disaster artist? The making of Tommy Wiseau? I did not love it. I did not. Oh. But I did like it. It was good. I enjoyed it. And I really do think you want to see the room before seeing this because there are definitely a lot of references and in jokes that are so much funnier you having can, seen you the room. You can put that out right now. You definitely, I mean, yeah, you can see it as a piece going into it as a bumbling idiot of a filmmaker and get some enjoyment out of the drama and out of the comedy, but do yourself a favor and, and sit through the room first. For me, the standout is obviously James Franco. He really just embodies the character of Tommy Wiseau or, or Johnny or whatever in the film. I mean, yeah. both the real person um, and the character in the film, not that you really separate those two. I don't think Tommy Wiseau is doing much acting in the film, The Room. <laughs> How dare uh, along you. Along with anybody else in the He's cast. He's acting his heart out, John. He's tearing the screen apart! God, tearing me apart! It was a really funny movie, and I, I like any movie that deals with the making of movies I'm usually interested in, and it's fun, you know, having worked on sets and stuff, there's always kind of inside jokes that are always funny to catch in those kind of films. Um, but yeah, I it was just a, an entertaining comedy. I don't think it's a film that, you know, I, I took too much else out of other than just some fun performances and mm -hmm. some fun, fun references of this this cult classic terrible film. I found myself not being able to find a dull moment in this film. I was completely sucked in from beginning to end. I was completely entertained by it. I've seen The Room with our buddies numerous times and we've done, we've been quoting the movie for years. Some of them more so than me. I, I must have joined the club about six or seven years ago. Oh wow. But when I did and I joined the, the Room club, it's always something that I love. This movie just does such a great job of, of pulling the heart of everything that Tommy Wiseau thought he was doing and making such a, uh, this isn't really even a spectacle movie. What I got reminded of a lot when I was watching this movie is uh, Tom DeSillo's Living in Oblivion. Uh, this is to a totally another level because Tommy Wiseau was not a director. He had no fucking idea what he was People doing. People can't even understand the language he's speaking, <laughs> much less his vision for this film. Yeah, yeah, but that's what, that's what's so funny about it and also like heartbreaking too. Like. James Franco is so incredible in this movie. I found him so, so good. And yeah, you were saying that there's a couple of the big quotes that he gives um, that are iconic to the original film that maybe he kind of fumbles a little bit. I was fine with it because I was almost, I think he was pick, picking and choosing the moments he wanted to try to nail exact and once he kind of wanted to make his own or like what we do, we exaggerate the shit out of these lines. Yeah, I, I could see that in the film, definitely. So even though that was my nitpick of like, oh, that's such an iconic line and he didn't <laughs> quite nail it, whereas other moments in the film he totally nails, they even show you at the end some side-by-side yeah. -side comparisons. I did and, not. And, and not. He doesn't do it that way. That's the part that he kind of... <laughs> yeah. did not hit her. I did not. I did not hit her. I did not. But yeah, he really embodies the character so much. Even like the physical, like he doesn't look as old, obviously. Yeah. He's, he's a younger man than Tommy Wiseau, who's like 99. We're not really sure, <laughs> um, which is one of the great mysteries Don't of the movie. Don't talk about me ever, Greg. <laughs> What is Don't he, the Fight Club? Don't talk about me ever. Like the body language that he nails of Tommy Wiseau, obviously the clothing, the look, the hair. The um, pale pastiness. The pale pastiness. Even, even he the bulked, rough skin, they get that right. He even bulked up mm -hmm. um, to, uh, it's an, an awkward, Tommy Wiseau is just very awkward looking. I think Franco just went above and beyond getting himself in shape, but not in a sexy in shape, and like that grotesque, in, you know, yeah. muscle. Yeah, even like his ass looks all <laughs> cottage cheese. Like <laughs> it's all like a hairy. Very necessary. I need to show my ass to sell this movie. I think you're aiming a little bit. I am what I am. Just do the scene. Why is he having sex with her belly button? 
he knows where her vagina is. Obviously, his brother Dave Franco is playing kind of the second lead from the room. He's crazy. He's playing Greg Sestero, who's who actually the wrote author, The Disaster Artist, which is a great book. I'd be interested to read it after yeah. after watching this movie. I think that'd be an interesting. He's read. a better writer than he is an actor. I sure hope so. <laughs> but then you've got uh, Seth Rogen. He's playing. He's awesome. I did not understand how he comes in as the script supervisor, who seems to take over as the assistant director. Because he has to. Because well, the, he has to. Sure. Yeah. Told, well, because Tommy Wiseau did not want to be. He didn't want to be a hands-on technical director, so he put himself because he so- he has no clue? Yeah, but he- I'll he just he buy to, the camera rather than to, rent it. He wanted to be like a king. Just, yeah. just overlooking his minions making his movie. He even made himself his own bathroom. Sitting on his porcelain <laughs> throne. But he puts himself so far away from the, from the DPs, from the cameras, that he can't really- instruct them because he doesn't mm -hmm. know what the fuck he's no, doing anyway not at all. so seth rogan being the script supervisor literally just has to jump in josh hutchinson playing yeah playing the danny. danny character <laughs> the mysteriously aged danny character. when i saw josh hutchinson having so much fun with that part i just was like oh man this is this is perfect casting. Yeah, that was Absolutely. Because because he's an actor who you don't really know how old he is. He looks like a kid, but yeah. I think he's like in his mid twenties at least. Let's get into Denny because it's the oddity of the film and possibly of the of the last twenty years. This character who jumps into bed with an older couple and starts rolling around with them, playing pillow fight. I for asked no, the I, exact same question that is asked in the film while watching it myself. What is the relationship of this kid <laughs> and these two people? What is going on? So the movie is so good at showing the scene. I mean, obviously the relationship, Tommy and Greg is is really, really deep and, and strange and kind of uncomfortable at times. And it never goes like Anything. gay, but it's almost there. Like not, not with Greg, but he, he never really knows what Tommy's after. And Tommy's never really shown with a woman. So you're, you're kind of, I think it's it, Tommy is buying himself a friendship. Oh, totally is. He's buying himself a friendship, but then at Greg, least in the film that scene. Yeah, obvious. and Greg really starts to care about him, and then more more so, I think, pity him. Yeah. But those scenes are played out so well, in my opinion. I think they're balanced with the comedy perfectly, where I find myself sad in these moments, but laughing at the exact same time because they're not make the movie does not make fun of Tommy Wiseau. It just shows him. It doesn't yeah. make fun of him at all. It's not that self-referential. It, it puts his strange and odd behavior on display, but I don't think it's necessarily mocking him or, or trying to condemn him in any way. I think it's just, it's letting you see that this guy's an oddball who had a dream and he was willing to follow his dream. He has the resources, which is part of the mystery, to, to pull off his dream. Um, and he wouldn't let anybody get in his way and do it the way he wants to, even when people come to him and say, hey, there's a better way to do this, or this is just not the way that a movie is made. He didn't give a shit. And he got his movie on the screen, and now he's got an Oscar contending spoof, essentially. When the mov this movie begins, and, and Greg and, and uh, Tommy are talking to each other, he goes, I one day be biggest star. Dude, they just made a fucking movie about you starring James Franco. He's never been bigger. He's huge. Like, everything worked. You can fail upwards in things other than sports. <laughs> I love how much Red Bull this guy drinks, too. I think his accent is actually... Is, is actually a cause of the Red Bull effect. Yeah, like it's, it's kind of like a mental disability from drinking too much Red Bull. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm wasted, I love you, darling. When I heard that it was like six million to make it, and I'm reminded that that's how much it took to make The Terminator. Um, <laughs> it's just funny what a real genius can do with six million. And what a real wacko can do. Yeah, it, well, that's the title of the book. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I think uh, James Franco did a great job adapting it. I think he did, he did a great job directing it. And he did a gr an amazing job starring in it. I don't think there's anything groundbreaking about the filmmaking itself. But it is one of those tricky scenarios where you're making a film about a film being made. So I know there's a little bit of technique that comes into play there. But um, I thought there's a little bit overuse of handheld camera work at times. It was a little off-putting for me. But I know this is telling the story of an independent film. So that, that style certainly goes along with independent filmmaking. So I get it. But personally, there was a couple times where just camera work was kind of standing out to me. Like, eh, this, I, I just wish they could just settle this down a little bit more. As film enthusiasts, and you personally, does watching a movie like The Disaster Artist 
about, you know, arguably one of the worst movies ever made. I personally have seen worse movies. Never Ending Story Part 2. If I use my last wish, I... Fantasia will be forgotten. And the childlike Empress will be gone forever. There were films of the past, like you said, Ed Wood or whatever, films when I was younger that maybe instilled that in me, made me kind of feel like that was a direction I want to go. Mm. Not anymore. My dreams have been crushed. I'm much like Tommy Wiseau in reality. My dreams are, are over with and dead. His dreams are just are just beginning. <laughs> and Tommy Wiseau, he's like a 15-year-old kid. He's a 15-year-old kid in, in a 95-year-old's body, I guess. <laughs> he's living out that Hollywood dream. Like... He literally, if this movie gets any Oscar contention, anything, like a fucking sound mix, he's going to fucking limousine up to the Oscars oh, and yeah. come out of the limousine. No, he'll drive around the second <laughs> time be like, not enough people yet. He I, better. He I better. need to keep the anticipation going. Where Dave Franco is talking on the phone. Oh, I hope no. I don't think anyone's ever going to see this piece of shit. So I, I should be fine, like, moving into theater acting. And then he sees a gigantic billboard with Tommy Wiseau's face plastered right in the center of it. <laughs> he paid for all the... He paid, obviously paid for all his own advertising as well as everything else. But paying... Pretty sure he paid for every cent of Paying movie. for that movie to stay in that one movie theater for two weeks must have cost a fortune. If you think about... What made it came, what might have come out in 2003 that was pushing its way in there? And he's like, oh, fuck you. My movie stay. And it was June, which is the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so it was contending with contention. Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> and Matrix movies and Terminator 3 and shit Man. like that in, in think 2003. Of, think about that. Like, he, who knows how much money he spent? So on the gulp gauge, I would score The Disaster Artist a six. It's really ironic because it kind of tells you that even if you work hard and you dream about something, people that tell you that you can obtain it are lying to you because it's just not true. In this case, something miraculous happened and now he's bigger than he possibly ever thought he would ever be. And most of that is not his doing. Most of it has to do with this at this point. All that said, I give the Disaster Artist 8.25 gulps. So we hope you liked this review. If you did, click like and or subscribe today. Join the club. Everyone else is doing it. John, where can they find it? Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Look for us under Cinema Gulp. Until next time, you want to play some football? For sure. You don't mind playing in that jacket? All right, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Catch! We drink your cinema. I drink it up! Yeah.